we're back with another episode. What's going on? Ready to go. Um, Big weekend we just had, uh, Coachella. Coachella? Yeah. I didn't even know that was happening. Would you want to go? Um, I would want to go if someone like, with like, someone who like had a house or something, beautiful accommodations. If you were hooked up. If so if you were up. like on a brand trip. Yeah. Okay, so like the people that went this year, there's different brands that they went with and that's kind of like, ooh, they're going with this brand or with this brand and staying at that house. So I'm going to re- like list off some of the brands that had, you know, hosts. Now, are they, do you bring your own friends or you, they Usually have to pick if you're friends. on a brand trip, you get a plus one. See, I would want to go with like my friends. Well, then you have to buy, then you don't get paid to go and you have to. So then you have to be friends with all like their other team yeah yeah but they're probably cool yeah um poppy i don't, I don't that's the that probiotic oh, yeah, drink okay. so you could go with poppy you could go with sol de janeiro that's that good smelling lotion that i used to use okay. before i went chemical free these are big sponsors. big brands that are hosting a lot of tiktokers uh celsius i don't like celsius okay um tart it's makeup Okay. Mm, I think those are like the options I remember. Which well, one? I would want to know who else was on like the teams. Well, just you have to pick that based off of that. So you don't know. Um, uh, and it's those are the only options. Yep. I feel like the like the probiotic people might be like too fitnessy. Well. I don't think that. Um, um, Alex Earl went with Poppy. Really? Yeah. Wow. That's a little young. Well, I mean, they're, they're all young. young. Yeah. Well, she seems cool. You like her. Yeah. So we'll go with them. Yeah. Poppy for sure. Um, yeah. It's that big a brand. I thought that was like a small brand. So on TikTok, this is for, for you and um, are there like older listeners or just listeners that don't use TikTok. I don't have TikTok. So the big thing is TikTokers, they go on all these brand trips. So like the and the, the brand will pay for this crazy trip and they have like all these influencers on TikTok go and they bring a plus one and it's just like extravagant and whatever they like. They get massages there. They do this. The one the biggest one was a tart, the makeup. They flew all the girls first class to Dubai and they were like in a safari doing it. And because and everyone gets mad because they're like, oh, they're spending all this money on our influencers that already have money. But that's the new billboard. Yeah. Now they're there for four days just doing products and filming content and putting it out and saying I'm on the Tarte brand trip. OK. So that's like kind of the thing, the thing now, like all like the brands do big trips and it's like, ooh, who's going to be there? And then it's like, oh, this influencer is hanging out with this influencer. And then they make they do collabs together. OK, so that's how marketing works now. All right. That's I want to go on a brand trip. Well, so you have to I might be too. yourself. More. I definitely am a little too old, but I want to be like, I want to go on a brand trip and like hang out with some of these because I love these girls. So then you have to start being a little more active on your socials. OK. It would be funny if like you and me were at like a brand trip. TikTokers. TikTokers. <laughs> But yeah, I don't even know. I don't know about that world. Yeah, so that was Coachella weekend. Did that already happen or it's happening? Yeah, it already happened. Oh, it already happened. Yeah. I was distracted by the UFC fights. Yeah, that this was weekend. yeah, that was pretty big. We watched almost all of them. I fell asleep by the main event. Um, but I remember when we started watching the first fight at six o'clock, I was like, all right, I'm so excited. We're sitting there watching, and then after we watched a couple fights. The thing came up and said, like, the countdown till the main card starts. And it was, like, two hours and 40 minutes. Well, they had a lot of those, like, in-between fights. They're, they were showing, like, the, all the old highlights. Yeah. They did such a sick job with that. The music was amazing. They, like, literally made me cry. Yeah, they were so sick. They'd be, like, an old-school, like, highlight. Then the same exact mm-hmm. type of move to, like, a more modern-day fighter. Yeah. But that whole production of it was so sick. I enjoyed that as much as the fights. Obviously, the fights were good. But like even besides just the fight card, I felt like it felt different watching it. Like it's like like I felt like this card 
it was like, oh, now the UFC just jumped a whole nother level. Not just because of the card. It's just their production is just so insane. It's so crazy. All the celebrities are everyone yeah. talking about it and just every it's always big. But yeah, like you said, the production is just so crazy. Yeah, when they first put the card out, they're like, this is going to be the best card ever. And I looked at it, like, eh, it's okay, but you're focused on like the main event mm-hmm. or the, the main card. But what they did was they made a whatever, f- 13 fights, 14, 13 fights. Uh, every single one was like a main event type fight. Yeah. You know, the fir- opening fight was two champs, two yeah. former champions. That's insane. But um, a few fights that I want to talk about, not necessarily even like the biggest ones, um, one that kind of bothered me, and I know that we're like friends with Aljo, Ugh. but uh, everyone was so hard on him, and they didn't even give him an interview, which is absurd. That's He's like insane. The best bantamweight ever. I think that's easy to say. And he didn't get an interview on this night, and they were booing him because he wrestled, and he went up a weight class, and he fought like a pretty elite guy, someone who's been in the top ten for a long time. And it just kind of reminded me of uh, I was thinking about that matchup and Aljo dominated him so much. And yeah, it wasn't exciting necessarily because it wasn't competitive. People sometimes value like fights that aren't competitive over dominance. Like I value dominance and Aljo like dominated every single second, every second. And it got me thinking of how big of a victory that actually was like a couple years ago. Granted, I think things could change over time, but Cater was on a main event and he was fighting Zabit and Zabit was like the second coming of Allah. It was like the greatest thing ever. And uh, everyone was saying how great he is. He's going to be the champion, this and that. And I think this was Zabit's last fight. It was supposed to be a five round fight, but then they switched it. It was like the only time I could ever remember a three round main event. That was crazy that they did that. Yeah, it was a three round main event. And at the end of the third round, the last like two minutes of the third round, Zabit was on bottom mount and Cater was on top of mm-hmm. him, like not almost finishing him, but kind of almost finishing him. Yeah. And it just goes to show like how good Cater is because Zabit was, you know, one of the best up and coming guys and mm-hmm. Cater was right there, lost a close three round fight with him. He won the third round. So even if he lost the first two, it's still you win, you know, you only got to win one more. Yeah. And Aljo completely dominated him and they kind of did him dirty. I didn't really like that. Yeah. Like I said, it it was so impressive. Obviously, we're super into jujitsu and wrestling, but watching him like that fight. It up was, a weight class. Up a weight class. It was crazy. I was like, oh, my God, he looks so good. Like, this is insane. And then them not even giving him an interview. I felt bad for him. They, I feel like people are always so hard on him. I don't really get yeah, it. It's weird. They are hard on him. But uh, then other fights, obviously, they were all amazing. There's just a couple like uh, any uh, what any specific fight you want to talk about? Uh, Kayla, obviously. Yeah, Kayla Harrison. She's like anyone that doubted her. I mean, she's definitely like you can't deny she's the real deal. She looked absolutely incredible. I she threw like head kicks and landed a couple head kicks. Yeah. On Holly Holm. I'm a fan of Kayla Harrison and I like her personally. But I'm going to be honest, I wasn't sure how she was going to do. It was when someone comes over from another promotion, even if they're dominant there, you're like, OK, well, how are they going to do against UFC fighters? And she got and I was like, damn, that's a hard fight for her first fight. But granted, um, Holly is definitely a little older. But yeah. Still, she but Holly's incredible. been looking good that she hasn't like her last couple of fights. It's not like she looked bad. That's true. Um, But like. I was like, okay, obviously Kayla wants to take her down, but it's not that easy to take Holly down. People don't just take her down like that. It was so insane. I was like, oh my God. I know that like definitely every girl in the division is kind of like, fuck. Like I think in the beginning they all wanted to fight her. Yeah. And now they're like, uh, I know for me, I'm like, oh, all of a sudden my weight cut doesn't look that bad. You know, right. <laughs> like yeah, yeah. my weight cut's 125. I'm like, eh, it's not that bad. But um, whereas like as soon as Amanda retired, everyone was like, oh, I want to fight at 135. I want to fight at 135. Right. Now it's like, eh, OK, maybe this is all right. <laughs> yeah, she looked amazing. Super happy for her. She's she's really cool. And uh, yeah, that was so super impressive. Yeah. Um, Then the Bo Nickel fight. 
that was kind of strange because uh, like after the fight, he like kind of gave himself two thumbs down. And again, he did amazing. He did like what early second round finish. I hate when fighters do that though. What? Like. They perf- they win and they do good and they're like ah it was so bad it was I did so bad it's like yo chill he got a lot of pushback on that and people did were it, like were people oh saying, he's he's exposed he's not as good as you thought really? I'm like how much better could you have possibly done you can't, I didn't see that at I, all I saw quite a bit of that he got I mean, some the, he got exposed a little bit how? he's not immortal blah 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 why he didn't get touched yeah I I don't know why they did but huh. th- there was only one comment that uh a negative one that I kind of wanted to talk about and it was uh Chimaev. so Chimaev tweeted out right after that fight is Bo's wrestling is bullshit Wait. and then I seen it at, like a couple different pages pick it up and I was reading the comments and they're like oh the Dagestani wrestling Bo is will get beat up by Chamayev. He can't wrestle Chamayev like that. You know, a bunch mm-hmm. of negative comments. But I think if they want to hate on Bo, they should talk about Chamayev could beat him in a fight if they want to say that. I don't think he would, but if they want to say that. But if they had a wrestling match, I don't think people really understand that. Like Chamayev is a great fighter, but he's never really wrestled that like a level. Like Bo Nickel would tech fall Chamayev in... In like freestyle wrestling, which is the sport that Chamayev has a background in, mm-hmm. he would tech fall him in like less than two minutes, probably a minute. Yeah. And in collegiate wrestling, which is a little more applicable to MMA, Bo Nickel would also tech him like the same. But it doesn't mean that he would dominate him in a fight like that. MMA is completely different. Just like, you know, if there's some elite grappler in the UFC, if they were to go at a jujitsu match with Gordon Ryan, they're going to get submitted in like 30 seconds. Right. You know, it doesn't mean that Gordon could do that to him in, in an MMA fight. For sure. But when people compare like Chimaev's wrestling, they don't say like MMA grappling. They say wrestling to Bo Nichols. There's really no comparison. Yeah, it's kind of comical. I think that's just like people don't understand. Yeah, people do not They just understand. say like, oh, his takedowns are wrestling. Or they just hear... You know them say like his wrestling so good, his wrestling so good. But you'll also you'll see that sometimes like, people say like, oh, I'd love to see a grappling match with Khabib and Gordon Ryan. Why? Like, it's like absurd. Like yeah. a jujitsu match, yeah. it's absurd. Yeah, that's but weird. But they, they need to say a fight. Like Chimaev could beat Bo Nickel in a fight. That that's what the headline should yeah, be. Not, yeah, yeah. Not a wrestling. His wrestling is bullshit. No, no, no. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I, I just thought that was funny, just from. Uh, Knowing well, the wrestling you could argue though, like, what about um, what about like uh, if someone wanted to argue that, you could say uh, what's his name, Henry Cejudo and and Marab, but I guess that's fighting. Well, that was fighting. If they yeah. were to wrestle, because I felt like they were like wrestling. No, they but were. But I guess they're just using punches but, like, to get in. Freestyle wrestling is not even applicable yeah. to MMA. Like you just have to roll them across their back. Henry would get one takedown and he would get a leg lace and, and he would yeah, roll them yeah. across the mat and it would you're be right. over in ten seconds. Then you'd say, oh, he's a better wrestler. Yeah, because the wrestling when you're involving punches and everything, even if it's it's totally different. Totally different, and the control, like Henry's entire career, he didn't even use wrestling. Mm-hmm. Most of Henry's big wins were not knockouts yeah or like striking fights against uh demetrius johnson he used some wrestling he took him down and won that was probably his biggest win but all of henry's highlights are from striking yeah i mean there's it's just everything's so different from sport and when you add it all together in mma i mean there's people that i've like done the pe- people that i've done are jujitsu just jujitsu and they will submit me in two seconds and then if we're doing mma sparring like they're not even good sparring for me or I've sparred professional boxers that it's like really we're going at it back and forth it's really super super hard and competitive when we're sparring boxing but then when we spar MMA I'm like it's this is pointless for me there's no you know what I mean it's it's a waste of my time like I feel like at that point I should be getting you know be teaching a private lesson but when we're doing just the boxing when it's their sport then it's right it, yeah, it, it's course. just so it's but it's weird you think like even striking you would think i mean it's the same thing with wrestling but striking you would think like oh well you're still doing it's totally it's different. so different it's so di- and i you can't i get why people think it's similar but it, it's nothing it's not similar yeah yeah um any other fights you want to talk about sp- specifically 
obviously there's nothing really to be said about Justin Gagey and Max Holloway. It was yeah. like the greatest like I did see a clip ever. where someone was like, Oh, I just know I saw it today where someone noticed they're like it's just crazy how MMA works. And they're like, look at this. And as they're swinging right before, like, you know, the punch, the last punch Gagey throws, he throws like, oh, obviously like a wild hook and they show it and they pause it. And they're like, it's just crazy in MMA. They're like if this, if his hand would have been one inch higher, it would have been right. And you see it, it goes like, he goes like this and it goes right underneath of his chin and that they pause it and his hands right here. They're like, if that hand, and he was like this, if the hand would have been like, one inch higher, one or two inches higher, they're like, it could have been the opposite maybe, way. Maybe. And it, but when you see the clip, you're like, damn it, it just shows like how crazy MMA is and how like, you know, how easy things can change and it's it's just wild. The only thing that could have been better for that fight would have been like a double knockout if that happened. Oh my god. Like they stood in the center and they both knocked each other that out. That would have been awesome. Double knockout. <laughs> Sounds like it was like kind of close. <laughs> that would have been but I don't think Max has ever been knocked out. So even if that landed, he probably would have been all right. Oh yeah. But maybe. That's pretty crazy. He's never. I mean, just because for how he's, many fights he's been and in, he's and only all, fought the best guys. All like five round fights. He's only fought like great guys. He's got to have like crazy amount of like uh, <coughs> octagon time. Yeah. I saw. I have the most uh, uh, fight time for flyweight. Yeah, I'm girls. Not surprised. Three hours. Wow. Three hours? Yeah. It was like, I just saw it the other day. It was like over three hours. That's crazy. Yeah. It's a lot of time in there. It's a lot too much time. That's why I have CTE. (laughs) I love CTE because I can use that as an excuse for the rest of my life. And people will feel bad for me. You have THC. Don't THC. Yeah. Kind of. Not CTE. CTE is a factor. I think it's THC. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah. Then obviously the main event that was sick, good win. But it's kind of I expected that. But who Pereira? Yeah, yeah. I kind of expected that. I hope that he goes up to heavyweight and fights. Uh, what's his name? What's that guy's name? I don't know anyone. Yeah. Well, the what is the heavyweight's name? You're asking Zane. No, I can't think <laughs> of it. Uh, not John Jones, the British guy. This is so embarrassing. It's not embarrassing for me. I don't well, know anything. I hope, that, I hope that that fight happens just because I would like the idea of like uh, win three divisions at school. But I don't think he'd beat John Jones still. Well, is John Jones fighting? He will eventually. You think? Yeah. I think John Jones is like more likely than Connor, even though Connor has a fight set. Well, I think of them the same. Yeah. No, I think John Jones will fight again for sure. But uh, other news, other big news, it's a little late. We're putting the podcast out a couple days late on it. But uh, rest in peace, OJ. That's sad. I didn't even know he was sick. I didn't know he was sick either. Um, did, were you into that um, pop, like whole thing? Hot, You're a little young. I like was you. always, When I was a kid, I was super into it. Like, I didn't know. So I knew you were obsessed with it like more recently with like when the Netflix thing came out, but I didn't know you were obsessed with it when you were a kid. Well, that's why when that Netflix thing came out, I was like super into it. Cause I knew, I knew all the characters, mm. like all like the lawyers and the prosecutors and the cops. Yeah. And when I was a little kid, I was like in like fourth or fifth grade and OJ Simpson played for the Buffalo bills. And like, I always like, wow, he was the, like the best player from the bills. Yeah. And like I thought it was really cool. So I was super into it. Like I'd go home from school and it would be like on TV for like months. What the trial? Yeah. It was like, a like TV how show. Amber heard and Johnny, but like on but the for news months. Yeah. For yeah. Months. And there was like, it wasn't like and Amber heard because trial. there was nothing else going on. Yeah. Like there wasn't, that was it, like it. You only had like a few channels and they were all OJ all the time. That's crazy. Yeah. So I was like obsessed with it. I remember I was so like so young, like five or six. But I remember I was a flower girl in a wedding. And like, you know, when you're that young where you just remember snippets of things. I remember after the like rehearsal dinner or something. It was uh, that was when the car chase was going on. Oh, and yeah. I remember being people following it and we were in the car going to like the restaurant. And they had it on on the in the car on the news had, on the radio. Yeah, on the radio. Oh, okay. And then when we went to the restaurant or whatever, they had like a little TV. I and mean, I remember people watching it, but I had no idea what was going on. Yeah, I was super into it. But uh, Did, Zane, do you know anything about OJ Simpson? This was way before your time, Zane. 
You know the story, right? OJ Simpson. You don't know anything about it? He's a football player. He's a football Somebody. player. And he, well, no, he didn't. He was accused of uh, killing his wife and his her boyfriend, her friend. Who was her boyfriend? He was a waiter. He his killed his wife and her boyfriend? Well, it was his ex-wife. After they got divorced? Yeah, allegedly. He Damn. was found innocent. Damn, that's kind of weird. But uh, yeah, <laughs> it was very, very tumultuous trial. Lot, lots involved. Lot Why of, would lot you of kill someone you're divorced to? Like, well, he didn't. He was found innocent. Well, why would you? And to this day, to this day, this happened in like the 90s. I love that Zane knows nothing about this. They, I thought I knew nothing. Still, but they still knows. haven't found the killer. The killer. So he died without knowing who killed his Is wife. this the guy w- with the picture and he has the gloves on? Yeah. Yeah. He's that like a, guy. Yeah. They're like, it doesn't fit. So it can't be me. I mean, yeah. that's a pretty sound argument. I yeah. Think. yeah. Well, the, the slogan was if the glove doesn't fit, you must acquit. And Kim Kardashian's dad was his lawyer. Do you mean Kim Kardashian's mom now? No, no. Her real dad. Her real dad. Oh, he died. Her real dad. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's so crazy. The other guy was a Olympic guy. Her Why do people not talk about this anymore? Oh my god. I mean, it was Zane, pretty it was pretty big story. It. Zane. <laughs> it was in the, it's been in the news. What news? <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh yeah, he Kyle uh, that went for like the first like 4 years we dated. That no, was Not the first 4. No, when he was on Netflix, I used to watch that to fall asleep. That was when he would watch to fall asleep the the Netflix documentary trial. Well, there's just so much drama, and they did such a good job with it. You know, and you know who was in it? Who played OJ? Hmm. My man. Who? Cuba. Oh yeah, yeah. Cuba Gooding Jr. We should watch it again, because maybe I'll. I don't think it's still on Netflix. It comes back every once in a while. It'll probably come out now. Now, but um, there was a. One of you guys, I think, or someone sent the article. It was like a news article over text, and it was like, O.J. Simpson reveals to his family or confesses to his family before his death. And then when you click it, it's the big black guy with, with his dick out. Yeah. And every time I use, I haven't seen one of those in a long time, but I, I always, it's so messed up, but I always send it to my mom and she gets so mad. But, uh, and I was like, oh my God, someone sent it. And I was like, please. I was like, send me that. I need to send it to my mom. So I kept trying to send it to her. She's like, it won't, the link won't open. So I sent it to her like three <laughs> times. She's like, it won't open. It won't open. I don't know why. Cause when I did it, it would open. I was so mad. And she was like, I did hear he posted on social media, <laughs> on social media right before he died, but a confession, but his family took it down. So I was like, I, the conspiracy theorist runs in the family. Yeah. But uh, I thought that was so funny. I don't even think I told her yet that that's what it was, but. Well, now she'll know. Yeah. Did you send it to your dad? No, my mom. So that's your dad. That guy was all over though for a while. I feel like that was the first time I've seen one of his links in a long time. Yeah, that's why it's better the consistency, but the long break. Because for a while I would send my mom links, and she's like, "I'm not opening it," and I'm like, Uh "No, it's real. This one's real." uh, Fauci. Yes. Like Fauci to recommend four masks. I'd be like, "That guy's (laughs) thick." It's just so funny. I've seen like people put that on him on like a birthday cake. (laughs) Yeah. The comments under the OJ death things oh, are were hilarious. They? They're just all super funny. Like making fun of it all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it's funny. Sometimes you're like, oh, no. I have really dark humor. And then I'll like, when I see the comments are going super dark humor, I'm like, yes. I love yeah. They're pretty I'm dark. like, all right, it's not just me. Or they're all saying what I want to say or something. Yeah. <laughs> That's super funny. Um, I saw this clip. So I'm taking an antibiotic right now, and I hate taking anything. I hate taking, like, Advil or all that stuff. But whatever. So I'm taking doxycycline for 14 days. I was like, ugh, it's so annoying. Normally I'm like, it's annoying because I just don't want to take it. It's not good for you. And it, like, kills your cardio, so that sucks. Um, But, of course, like, the algorithm knows right away. I saw this TikTok video where they said it takes your body, if you take a five-day z pack. It takes your body three months to re- your it takes your gut three months to recover from that, and I was like, "Cool, I'm on 14 days of doxycycline." They said it takes six months for your gut to recover from it. That's wild. Six months for an antibiotic. 
That's crazy. That's so insane. So now I'm paranoid. And normally if I was on antibiotics, I'd be like, try to have yogurt or some kombucha like once or twice. But I'm like going crazy. I'm doing prebiotic, probiotic supplements and foods. So asparagus, yogurt, kefir, yogurt. You said yogurt. Oh, uh, I bought like fermented carrots and I don't like it, but I'm trying to eat it. So it tastes bad. Yeah, I don't like it. But I don't really like like I don't like like pickles and stuff like that. Mm. I'm trying to eat it. It's like carrots and ginger. I bought it and I just can't eat it. I bought two jars. I can't even eat one. So you have a whole gut health. Yeah, because I'm I'm pe- it's annoying that you have to take it and for you know what I mean. It sucks. Yeah, that does suck. You ever see that guy? He goes to the um like it'll be like an is pro Israel or pro Palestine like um whatever protest or something uh-huh. and everyone's like going crazy and like go nuts and he'll go up to him and he'll ask a couple of questions then he'll be like what are you doing for your gut health I that just reminded me the guy is that. so fucking funny then he asks like insane questions like would you rather be sticky or itchy yeah like and be like what but like, what are you doing for your gut health that just reminded me yeah and sometimes people answer tr- right away like they have no idea he's talking sometimes about them. they get so sometimes mad. they get pissed like why are you asking about my gut right now this is palestine oh. uh-huh. Both of them are insane. Yeah, that's a, those are. Very, I uh, saw they're doing. They had protests. I don't know which one. I don't really. I don't know much about that. But uh, I think it was at the Chicago airport on Sunday. They had they had to shut down the shut down the, the highways and the airports because people were just sitting like Indian style, holding hands and like blocking off the road. Like, if I'm the first car, there's no possible way they're stopping. I'm just going to go super slow until they What, move. so you run them over? No, they wouldn't run over. I would go, like, super, they super will. Those slow. T- those no, people no, are no, insane. No. They're not willing to die. They're willing. No, but they're willing for you to, like, kind of hurt them so they can sue you. No, I would just go super slow, and then they'd get up. No. Like, I've seen that happen, like, here, like, on the southern state during, like, the uh, BLM stuff. Mm-hmm. People were blocking the road. Like, if I was getting by, there's no, if I was the first car, not if you're in the middle. Yeah, if I'm yeah. the first car, there's no possible way I'm not going. No way. I'm not sitting there for, like, hours. Ugh, then everyone least... would just follow you. So it's not their fault. It's the, pe- the first person. I don't know. I don't fault. think it's that easy. I think they go out when no cars are there, and then they're sitting down. I would just go. You can't run Not run them over. over. I wouldn't, like, run them over, but I would go, like... They'll just sit there. No, but I would go like like in drive, like foot on the brake. I'd be like, pump the brake, pump the brake. And like, they're not, they 100% they're getting up. I don't think, I don't know. Yeah, definitely. But my whole point is like, why, why do people do that when they protest? Like that has nothing, that's not doing anything. Well, we're talking about it. It's the but same I don't hear. But like, I don't. I have no idea what side it was. I don't know if it was. But like the people that like for climate change, they throw like soup at like the Mona Lisa. You see that? Yeah. Yeah. So that's like they just do it to get. Um, I think those are like the worst types of people ever. The worst people on earth. Like you have nothing going on, and then that's what you're doing on your day. You're gonna go. Hey, imagine like all of us. Like, hey guys, on Sunday, let's go to the airport and sit on the road and annoy yeah. everyone and ruin people's days that aren't involved in it i'd have more respect for them if they just blew blew something up yeah like they themselves just, yeah yeah that i think i have like more respect for if they just of kill course. themselves because then it's like that might get talked about a little bit more but like and if everyone keeps doing it then maybe they'll be like, wait, wait. Just people being annoying is like, that's just... insane though yeah, they had to shut much. down the airport i was just thinking about it because it was chicago airport and i'm like we were there a week before i was like could you imagine if that happened like in the day? i would be so annoyed if i was the first car though it wouldn't happen i don't think so i think you're i don't know 100 percent. well speaking um, of protest actually there's something i actually wanted to bring up what so you guys remember how it was uh the end of ramadan last week yeah and i was telling you guys how like i went to like that big like open facility and there was like thousands of people there like, like a mosque yeah but outside n- it was like the charles Lindbergh center whatever is it a mosque <clears throat> no the charles Lindbergh center oh okay yeah the one the really big one in nassau so this is like coachella for muslims coachella for muslims okay yes. <laughs> yeah so i went and i remember thinking distinctly i was like there's like at least like two thousand people here 
And I'm like, wow, this would be a really bad time. This would actually be the oh most opportune time to get shot up, God. honestly. And yeah. that actually happened. There's a good joke there. but uh, What? <laughs> what? <laughs> no, go ahead. And that actually happened in Philadelphia. What, at, they uh, did one at, of these in Philadelphia? and they Yeah, so there, in Philadelphia, uh, there was a thousand people like celebrating uh ramadan then to ramadan and uh at, during the prayer they got shot up they said 30 rounds were emptied into the crowd did people die no i didn't even see that nobody no one died no one died wow. that's because their aim was really bad oh my god but they're God. like they're they saying they have five out. suspects with guns in custody damn five that's crazy wow so uh, three people got injured. One of them was a child. Uh, nothing major happened, but that kind of like kind of confirmed my fear. I'm like, I'm probably not even gonna go next year to like the. Yeah, the honestly, I wouldn't. Earth. Yeah, there's because well, you're like a target. Yeah, I, I was thinking about it. I was like, oh, that'd be kind of. Cr- this is like the perfect time for someone to do that to us. And like an anti-Muslim person. Yeah, of course. Oh my god. And like, I would think it would happen in Long Island more than like why Phil- Philly. Why? Why Philly's not? pretty. I feel like Philly's more gun. No, than but Long he's Island. saying like he's saying it from a different angle. He's saying like Long Island people are racist or no, but Jewish I'm saying people. that like like there's more crazy people here in New York than Philadelphia. I would think. Well, so. Well, he's thinking New but York I've never, City. I've never lived in Philly, so no. I don't know. Philadelphia, I just think of like guns and. But it's a different type of guns. I think it's more like street violence. Not I've never like, even been to Philly, actually. I love Philly. Love it. You would never move back to Philly. No, but I like it. <laughs> what are your top three cities? In the world? In the world. Um, in the world. In the world. You can't say New York. Can't say New York? Can't say New York. Damn. No, I'm going to say New York. Okay. <laughs> it can't be number one, though. No, I'm, these be. aren't in order. Okay. I'll <laughs> say New York, Dubai, Las Vegas. Damn. Not Philly? Not top three in the world, no. Mm. Okay. What about you? New York and Philly. What about top three? <laughs> Dubai is pretty sick. It's sick, yes, but it's like, it's definitely sick. But I don't think it's got like as much. I don't know. It's I think it's so sick, but like I like New York and Philly better. Wow. I think there's more like little subcultures where like Dubai feels like it's just one culture. There's different people there, but like mm. the, it's one vibe. Just where, like fancy. Yeah, which I love, and I think it's mm. cool. I think the Philadelphia and New York is really cool. There's like little pockets of like different worlds, like all in in the city. I mean, I'm sure that's that's how like Los Angeles is like that too, and like, but I don't, I don't know. I just like them the best. Hmm. Your Sorry, I'm allowed to. Okay. Sorry. Your your vibes, your tribe. Hmm. Your vibe is your tribe. Exactly. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, anything else you want to talk about before I want to talk about the Olympic trials a little bit? Uh, you want to go over the obesity rate thing? Oh, yeah. I brought before. So the exact wording of it was a little off. Uh, I remember I told you guys that more people in the world now are fat than or not o- fat. obese. If the reason the correct term. Okay. Than not obese. But. Here's the key statistics. Um, 79% of adults uh, who are overweight will be living in low and middle income countries by 2035. Okay. And 88% of children will be overweight by 2035. 88%? 88% living in, in these, 10 years? In 10 years in these low and middle income countries. Okay. And it is projected that the number of adults. Uh, living with obesity will rise from 0.81 billion in 2020 to 1.53 billion in 2035. Okay. So it used to be the opposite, right? Like you, you live in a, like a low to middle income country. You're not fat. You're just, hungry. you're hungry. Mm-hmm. Well, it's because of chemicals. Well, he's saying worldwide. Yeah. But people always say that other countries don't have chemicals. Yeah. But these low, inc- like they probably give them like, processed food and for like the low income yeah yeah i mean you would think maybe they're exporting food from like america to those places probably mm-hmm. maybe it's cheaper yeah you know like i don't know the exact science behind it a lot of corn 
maize, flour, corn. Maize. Yeah. Ugh. So, um, yeah, I don't know. But, I mean, that doesn't surprise me. Most people are fat. But 88% of children? I mean, it's disgusting. Like, the more, like, I, I, I don't know. I'm super, like, into food. And when I see people, like. Like, shopping are, carts are crazy, right? I walk around with the bitchiest look on my face when I walk around the grocery store and I look at everyone's carts. I like sometimes if someone has like kids with them and their kids are fat and they have gross food in them, I purposely give them a dirty look. It's funny because like I, I like to eat like food that's not so healthy sometimes. But like when you see a shopping cart and it's filled with like like oh, I can Hot tell Pockets and Pop-Tarts. Pringles. And Pringles and Doritos, goldfish and soda. Coke. Like, that's not like you're treating yourself. That's like what you eat on exactly. a daily basis. Like I get nothing from that. I'd rather eat nothing and not for health reasons at all. Like if you give me like a really good pizza or a really mm-hmm. good cheesesteak, that's terrible for you. That, all right, this is enjoyable. But to eat like pop tarts and like wonder bread. And when you're an adult too. Yeah, like that's insane. Like there's people like our age that like they're eating like Doritos. I'm yeah. like, yo, like that's embarrassing. Yeah. Like that stuff. I don't understand. Like I understand that eating healthy. If it's like something like delicious yes. and I totally get that. I'm like, all right, this is so good. Yeah. But to eat something like a packaged fucking, I was at Costco today and I saw this lady with a mask on and she had two cases of Coca-Cola and a variety pack of Pringles. I didn't see the rest of it, but that's why I saw. I'm like, oh, so you have a mask on, but you're eating that? Like, that's insane. And, like, she probably has kids. And I'm like, you're raising kids. Or you're, like, poisoning them. There's just now, I think when we were younger, it's totally different because people didn't know. Now yeah. it's so out there. If you even kind of, like, go on... Like, you know what I mean? Go on the internet. You can see some that some of the stuff isn't healthy for you. Yeah. It's not that hard. And like, it's crazy. Like people have kids that have like ADD and they do all this research on ADD, but then they won't eliminate red dye 40, which when you eliminate it, a lot of times they don't have to go on meds, but it's easier for them to put them on meds than to eliminate goldfish. Right. Because they're like, well, when, what am I going to give them? Like, just research it. Or they're like, oh, it's so expensive. Mm. It's not. If you, It might be a little bit more work, but it's crazy to me how many parents are just like, uh, whatever. And I think people are just programmed to think that, like, medication is normal. And if the doctor gives it to you, it's totally fine. And it's, like, crazy if you think that that's bad for you. Mm-hmm. But, like, it's insane. I saw, like, a thing they... They're saying that like they just announced that like Lunchables are label being labeled as bad. And they're like, oh, that's in a lot of school lunches like or school cafeterias. Right. People are like, what? Well, that's they, bad. What did you think? You thought that that was good? And then the food that they serve and like kids, like it's disgusting. You know what I always think about? Like when you see someone like like I even have friends they like drink every single day like drink beers every day and eat like just total shit food I'm always thinking like man I must be like such a pussy because if I eat like that for like one day which I definitely never eat as bad as like the average person does Mm -hmm. every day but if I eat like one day like pretty bad like if I eat like a pizza and like some shit food the next day I feel so terrible I'm always wondering like I think you build a tolerance almost for that stuff because I like can't even like stand up straight after I eat really yeah. bad. Like, how do these people function? How are they feeling? But I think maybe you just get used to it. I think that's their baseline. I'm, or I'm just such a pussy. Yeah, I know. I think that they don't know what it's like to feel good, so they just get used to that like shitty feeling. Yeah, they don't even know what it's like to feel good. Yeah, I have more data for you guys, actually. So, okay. Uh. Where would you think the United States ranks in terms of worldwide obesity? Like what number? One through ten, we'll say. I mean, I would have said. Top I would have said one. I would have said top five. So we're actually the tenth. Really? Um, one through nine is all in the <coughs> same area. Can you guess what area of the world? South. South America. It's kind of. Uh, actually, I don't even know if it's kind of. I don't even know what the place are, but Pacific <laughs> Islands. Oh, okay. Where? Pacific Islands. The Pacific Islands. So the top nine. What are they? What's Samoa? Some, so here's some. So we got 
American Samoa. Samoa is actually number one. Yeah. Yes. Uh, can you guess what uh, what the percentage is? That, I mean, that's like part of the culture there. Well, I, I wouldn't say part of the culture. No, just, it is. Really? Yeah, I always yeah. think of like when I think of Samoa, I think of a big, big person. Yeah, that's like part of the like culture almost. So, well, the top nine are all above fifty percent. American Samoa being seventy percent. Seventy percent obese. Yeah, seventy percent obese. And if, if this is for adult males, are they using the BMI? Uh, I do not know because, because BMI, uh, I'm obese. Same. Oh. You know, I'm obese too. Yeah. No, if you're tall and like muscular, like you're obese. I'm probably or if you're ob- not that tall. That's more what it is when mm. you're not that tall. So, like, if you're like five eight, two ten. I think like for like jacked. girls, like my BMI is pretty high. Probably. I don't know what it is, but it's high. So, reading the studies based on why this uh, specific area of the world is so fat, it says. Um, Island nations have predominantly focused on two physical characteristics of the island, which highlight their uh, obesity. Uh, Their geographical isolation and susceptibility to food shortage, which is uh, hypothesized to have enhanced islanders' genetic predisposition to gain weight. Yeah, that makes sense. So they have bad genetics, and that's why they're obese. No, that's that's one of them. And the second one is just uh, having to like import everything. Yeah, and it's processed. Yeah, this fresh stuff doesn't travel as well. No, you could probably get all. good fish and stuff there. Probably, Pescatarian. Uh, probably, but who's going to do all that? I don't think it would be that hard. Fish, fried. But that's part of your culture. I think it's like what you're attracted to and stuff. But I think, think about different. like, I don't know how to fish. and like. No, you don't have to do it, but I'm sure there's fish markets. What if it's super expensive now? Well, I don't know. It probably is because everything is so much like cheaper and processed. I think that people should get in trouble if their kids are obese and they're like under a certain age. Elaborate on that more. Because I think that it, like when I see like I'm not talking like a little chubby when I see like a child that's obese. It's like sad. I think it's so sad and I think it's child abuse because I've seen it. I've known people where they're like someone like a kid in their families and they think it's funny and they're like it's so cute he loves food and i'm like what i'm like that's one the kid's gonna is gonna be unhealthy and have health problems for the rest of his life two he's gonna get made fun of and now he's gonna have mental I, well, issues I think, that, I think that that's a big thing i don't think they do they're not allowed to get made fun of anymore I, i'm sure they still do get made fun of you think mm-hmm. i think people get made fun of a lot less maybe but i think the kid little kids still get made fun of yeah yeah that's good. And I think that they probably like feel insecure. But when I see like I've seen like fat kids, like fat, fat kids and their parents are just like uh-huh, and the parents aren't fat either. Like that's child abuse. I think that's so disgusting. And I think that adults should get in trouble if their kids are obese. Yeah. Good point. Good point. Um, Anything else on the obesity you want to touch on, Zane? No, I think that was everything. Uh, last thing I want to touch on, if there's still any listeners, uh, the Olympic trials coming up this weekend. This is kind of not Caitlin's interest, but I'm into it. Um, you have any predictions, Zane? I mean, David T- David Taylor's coming back? Yeah. I'm going to say Taylor. I think maybe this is the year Dake loses. To who? Bone, uh, not Bo Nickel. Uh, what's Jordan, his face? Jordan Burroughs? Jason Nolf. Oh, man, maybe. And, well, I mean, it's kind of sad to say because I like, really like Kyle Dake. But uh, I think, are Yanni and, and uh, Vito in the same weight class? Vito's not wrestling. That's the, what I want to talk about. Oh, really? So, in the Olympic year, like, Vito won the world championships. But they, in a non-Olympic year, they have 61 kilos. So it goes 57, 61, 65. On the Olympic year, they take that weight class out. So it goes from 57, which is like 127, I think, 128. And then it goes all the way up to 65, which is like 144 or 143. Mm-hmm. That's a huge jump. Yeah. So – I saw Flow Wrestling was talking about should they eliminate 57 because it's too small. But I don't think that's the case because there's plenty of good guys there like, you know, Spencer Lee and Gilman. And sure, they have to cut weight. But historically, they they used to have a weight class 50 kilos, 105. 
It was like Rob Eider was on the Olympic team. And then the next weight class was 118, which is was like, um, or 114 maybe. But it was like Lou Roselli and Zeke Jones, people like that. So there was two weight classes smaller than 57. So I think they need to keep 57, but they can't go from 57 to 65. Because then all like the 133 pound type wrestlers or one, even 141 are kind of undersized for 65. And those are like 133 is always like the best weight. Like Vito, I think is like one of the best wrestlers. And now he can't really do it. He's got to either get bigger and figure it out or um, really figure out how to lose that weight. So that that's a kind of an interesting point. There's only six weight classes to make an Olympic team. Crazy hard. But then what's the point of like winning a world championship at like the what was the weight that you won it at? Yeah, sixty one. Like on a non Olympic year, there's uh I think there's eight or even maybe even nine weight classes. But there's several more. Mm-hmm. This is they never used to do that when I was wrestling. It was always there were seven weight classes on the worlds or the Olympics. But now there's a few extras on the non Olympic year. So some people will be like, well, yeah, he won it, but not at an Olympic weight. Mm-hmm. They don't give it as much um, credit, like the real diehard people. So if he wins it, he doesn't qualify an Olympic anything. If he when he wins the world championships at his weight, um, no, it doesn't like qual. It's like a new. It's yeah. It's like nothing. How does qualifying a weight work for? You have to win. Uh, there's certain like grand prix that you could win. And then your continental games, like there's like the Oceanic games, there's the African championships, there's the Pan American championships, there's the Europeans, and there's the Asians. So you have to win one of those if your weight class isn't qualified through placing like top seven at the uh, world championships. That doesn't even qualify you, that qualifies your weight. It qualifies your weight class. Wow. So there's been, I think there's been times in the past where a weight class has not been qualified. Is there anything you would change? To the way that it's structured or not? They change it all the time. Now, like, the if you're an Olympic champion, you sit until the finals. I think that what they're doing now is good. I mean, this is the best USA wrestling has ever been. I mean, I guess you could say maybe in the 80s they were similar. Mm-hmm. But they're by far the best. But it's mostly, like, if you look at the qualifiers, like, every weight class has several guys from Nittany Lion Wrestling Club. Like, <laughs> That's there's crazy. 10 people in each weight yeah. class. At the at the trials, and several of yeah. them in each weight class is from Nittany Lion Wrestling Club. So that's where, like, the that's so that's like where the new Olympic Training Center. That's the Olympic Training Center. Yeah, yeah, that's the Olympic Training. So Center. then, are the kids in college training with them? Yeah, like yeah. all the time. That's yeah. I mean, they have their own practices, but I'm sure there's probably, quite a bit of overlap. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, even guys that like wrestled like a, a while ago are coming out of retirement for this. Like who? Morgan McIntosh, Ed Ruth. Like, are they qualified? Morgan McIntosh uh, lost at the last. Uh, yeah, yeah, last but they're chance. not qualified for the trials. No. Yeah. No, but I'm just saying. Oh, like on an Olympic year, yeah, people come out of like you know come out of the woodwork. Yeah. And then like the last Olympic cycle was kind of like, you know, it was like kind of like a COVID year. Yeah. It was in 2021, and like there was a little. It was a little different. You know, Russia wasn't there. Mm-hmm. So are they back? Um. I think they are, but okay. some of the wrestlers got in trouble. Who do, who are your picks for each weight? For the United States? Yeah. Um, I think Spencer Lee. Uh, Nick Lee. Really? Yeah. Brothers? No. No mm. relation. That's kind of weird, one. though. Spencer Lee, Nick Lee. Dake. Taylor. Snyder. And then... Uh, Heavyweight. Gable? No, I don't think he's wrestling. Really? I'm not sure heavyweight. Um, Maybe. It's kind of a big loss, then. Yeah, I don't think he's wrestling. Oh, Mason Paris. Uh, Mason Paris or Gwizdowski, I'd say. One of those two. Probably Mason Paris. That's hard for yeah, me to pick. I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't be able to choose. Yeah. Because Mason yeah. gets beat by like the best guy at that weight class. Who does? Mason. At the uh, worlds. I like every every like tournament he does. He's done like he's always like placing. Well, second, he takes it. He took like third at the worlds. He's definitely super high level. Do you think he's better than Gwiz? 
He's beaten him. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. And he sits to the finals. But it'll be either Gwiz or him, I'd say, probably. I don't know. Why are you picking Nick Lee? I mean, he's won the last couple. Why? Who do you think? I mean, I don't even know who's at that weight. I, I'm well, that's Yanni's that's... weight. Is Rutherford there, too, or no? Um, Yeah, I believe so. Nick Lee. Oh, actually, no. Rutherford's sitting, but I think Nick Lee will pull that one out. I think Rutherford wins. Then Yanni's in there. No, I think Nick Lee will win that weight class. If not Rutherford, then Yanni, in my opinion. I don't think so. I think Nick Lee. We got to go and watch it, I guess. Yeah. I like Helen McGarlis. I think she's not wrestling anymore, or is she? I don't know. I just she is. Her. I just saw her do a post of Vicky Vortex. I oh, like okay. both of them. Yeah, we like them. We should have them on the podcast. I was okay. just telling Kyle about this. Okay. Yeah, we should. You know, Joan, aren't you like face or uh, Instagram friends with Vicky Vortex? Yeah, yeah. Talk to her. All right. Um. All right. So, yeah, that's that. If you guys want to have us talk about any specific topics, DM us on our Instagram or leave a comment and review or just leave a comment and review just to be nice. We like it. <laughs>